G'day guys, Mackie with the Outer Circle, and today I want to probe a little bit deeper into this hobby. I want to talk about a few concepts um, when it comes to painting and sculpting. Um, first things first, there are two things that you look at when it comes to models. The sculpt and the paint job. If one is really bad, the other can offset it to some degree. And if the two are both really on point, you'll get a fantastic model out of it. But if either one of these things is lacking, then it will bring the overall quality down. Of course, the image before you is, uh, is of Rebute Gilliman, or Rebute Gilliman, or however you pronounce it with an English accent. Now, the model is not the best, we'll say, to be politically correct. Um, it has its flaws. Unlike with Forge World, who will go out there and try and sculpt and they're trying to look at Games Workshop stuff from an alternative viewpoint. Games Workshop just seems to ignore what Forge World's done and do their own thing when creating their Primarchs. You look at what Forge World did with Gilliman, he looks very much like he's in the same armour as the Marines around him with the Mark III, that kind of thing. Yes, I know I'm talking about Gilliman, but there is a point to this. Very little of his design aesthetic is actually carried over to the 40k Gilliman. The sword is the Emperor's, the face is just nothing alike. Um, he looks like he's wearing lipstick and has these big sunken cheeks with an Arnold Schwarzenegger's jawline. Whereas this Gilliman has a very regal face and it looks like his brothers. They all have those very sharp patrician features. Nah. Looks great. He's also got the strong Roman theme with the Peturges. Uh, hanging off his armor. Just looks great. It's a good looking model. Yes, not everyone is happy with this model and it does have its flaws. Let's be honest, it does. But it's overall a pretty good model. Com comparing it to this Gilliman, this Gilliman has flaws as a model. The filigree and things like that, the color palette used, it doesn't look like the army around it. It doesn't fit in. It doesn't look quite right next to the Marines around him. And that's the biggest flaw I've had with it since day one. He looks more like the intricate golden trim that you'll see on a Thousand Suns model in 40k. Also, the way that sort of he's got this backpack, that a lot of this styling is very reminiscent of Age of Sigma as opposed to 40k. So it doesn't really know what it is stylistically, this model. Now, you contrast that with the paint job, which is not a terrible paint job, but the paint job can't save this model. The flaming sword looks great the way it's been done. I hate sculpted on energy, but in this case they've done a pretty good job of it. The face, however, is just terrible. And this is something that's affected Forge World with some of their painting as well. Again, compare it to this Gilliman. The blonde hair, the way his face looks, he doesn't look like he's wearing lipstick. This one does, and he looks like he's just very, very angry. So if there's an emotion they wanted to get across, and it was anger, then they've done a great job. But his face is just grotesque. Now, everyone's probably sitting there going, what are you getting at, Maka? You're talking about Gilliman. Well, these same principles apply to Mortarium. This is the 30k Mortarium model. It has a little weird looking pose in these images, but when you hold him in person, it works. I know, I didn't think it would um, until I got my hands on one and painted one of my own. And this is 30k's uh, Mortarian. Now in 30k, Mortarian looks exactly like the Death Guard should look. You don't know why, but he just does. Why is that? Well, it's the colour palette they've chosen to go with. Very uh, pale colours, very dirty colours, tarnished and very muted colours. There is nothing that's really bright on this model and jumps out at you. In fact, the painter has done an excellent job here and it's something I tried to replicate to some extent with my own. Um, inferior version of this. Now, why does it work? Well, when you're looking at the colours that you've chosen, and keep in mind, I'm no master painter. Yes, I have some painting awards, but I'm not like a multi-golden demon slayer sword winning king fucking shit. When you've got Mortarian here, you're talking about creams and beiges. And they're dirty, they're rusty, they look oily and ugly. What does this mean to us? Well, you may not know it, but subliminally, you go, that's dirty. There's something off about this. It looks like, you know, dirty bed linen. 
use toilet paper, that kind of thing. If I show you a picture of some dirty linen, mouldy uh, cloth, you can see what I mean. Something about it just says dirty and off to you, because when white isn't clean, it's so noticeable. Whereas when other colours are not clean, if other colours aren't perfect, when you look at this Gilliman, he's perfect. Look at his white cloak. Now contrast it to Mortarian, his white cloak. Looks like he used diaper, doesn't it? But it's not over the top, it's only a tiny bit of weathering realistically. But it works. Well, this is what helps to establish the character of Mortarian. Also, note the face. If I can get as close as I can, his face is not fleshy colours. It's not uh, hues of pinks and oranges. Um, it's more greens mixed in with creams. Um, it's got that sort of corpse look to it, like the blood has been drained from the face, or, or he's too cold, or maybe even he's cadaverish. Again, that's what they're trying to hint at. And lastly, that subtle look is carried over by all the corroded copper and bronze on his armour. He also has the little plague sensors, but unlike the 40k Death Guard sculpts in the current uh, starter set, all these sensors that are hanging off his uh, backpack here, the little balls on chains which burn the incense, they're not gigantic. They're quite tiny, they're quite in proportion to his body. Lastly, he's got some of those medieval elements with the chain mail and the joints around the legs. Um, again, around the knees, groin, abdomen, chainmail. So there's something very crude about him. The scythe, wood grained, you know, it's trying to bring over that specter of death, uh, the actual character death uh, in mythology, uh, in European mythology anyway, the Grim Reaper. And how it's also got a techno edge to it with the fact that the scythe isn't just a scythe, but it has sort of like this little chainsaw looking part and there's some technology to it. Some visible technology. So that's the way they've created this sculpt. It's a great sculpt with an awesome paint job. Now, we all know this old image of Mortarian. When we think of 30k, uh, sorry, the Demon Prince Mortarian, going from the 30k model to the 40k one, this is sort of what we expected. It's not what we got. What are the design elements here? Well, the armor has gone green like the rest of the Death Guard. He still has the cloak. However, this time it's really tattered and really dirty. The color palette has gone to browns and creams and reds. Very dirty colors. Okay, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, it's in fact, perfect. It's telling you exactly what you want to know. That this is someone dirty, filthy, defiled. It looks like almost like the wrappings around a mummy, a mummified corpse. Um, there's very thin in his limbs, like he's almost wasted away, which is in the fluff what's happened to him. He actually wasted away to the point where he's pr practically a corpse um, before he gave in to Nurgle. And you can see it in his face. He has very skeleton-like features in his face. You can see very prominent cheekbones, the teeth, the way the nose is sunk right in, almost vampiric in a way, um, like how some of the vampire counts models look. And that's great, that's representative of the Grim Reaper and death. Now, let's contrast it with the actual Mortarian model that we've got. Now, I'm not going to pick on this too much. It's a brand new model. This is a terrible picture of the model because it's a leaked picture. It's not high resolution up close, it's just this tiny little picture someone's taken of a white dwarf and uploaded to the internet. But where does it go wrong? The sculpt I can live with. Yes, it is quite busy. But this doesn't annoy me like the Magnus sculpt did. He has the lantern, his pistol. It looks very different to his 30k one. He has the scythe, silence. Looks very different to his 30k one. Again, contrast it to this. That's the pistol, and that's the scythe. Now, the scythe uh, is all corrupted with ribs and things like that. It didn't need that. It was just that's just extraneous detail that's just there for no reason. All the little ball and chain sensors that are hanging off him, instead of being these quite small and subdued ones, that are just a little extra detail on the model. Uh, 
these ones, they jump right out at you. They're huge. They're swinging off very long chains. You can't help but notice them. Also, the center of any model is their face. This point right here. Look at this Mortarian. You're drawn to this section. He's holding his weapons at this height across his chest. His face is in here. There's a lighter color with the hood and the contrast of his face. Same with Gilliman. This fleshy part here very obviously sticks out against the rest of his armor. But when you look at Demon Primarch Mortarian, his weapons are held out low, away from his face, away from that part of his body. There is so little of his head to be seen, it's pretty much just his eyes behind this breathing mask that you can't, you're not drawn to it. In fact, if you're going to be drawn anywhere, the biggest mass part of the model is the lower half. There's no face there. And the one color that sticks out is this bright red loincloth. What are the problems here? Well, Games Workshop, yet again, when they've translated a 30k miniature, or Horus Heresy, Forge World miniature, whatever you want to say, into a 40k one, they've completely dispatched with the existing armor of that model. Instead of using the Mark III armor that Mortarian had, he's just got this amalgamation of Baroque armor, which is fine. I'm not going to pick on it for that. I'm just saying they've changed it. They didn't need to change it, and it doesn't make sense that it's being changed, unless his model changes war gear completely sometime mid-heresy, throws away all this awesome armor that he has, and he has very good armor in the Horus Heresy game. We're talking 2+, plus, say, 4+, plus in Vol. Like, it's pretty decent armor. You don't get much better than that. Very few Primarchs have a 3+, plus in Vol. He's not only got rid of the armor, he's completely changed it up. And yes, there's some argument for mutation, that kind of thing, but it's just, it's clearly different. Right down to just the Death Guard symbol on the kneecap, um, all the little spikes along the leg. I don't see Mortarian as the sort of guy who would have just stylized his armor like that. Mortarian's more of a just, his armor is a means to an end. So it doesn't make sense with the character of the model that's been established in 30k. Now, the rebreather is a big point. The biggest feature of his face now is this awkward looking gas mask and how it's got like big rebreather filters that stick out in odd directions. Mortarian should have a rebreather. Um, the 30k model doesn't. I think it looks strange and it's one of the things that I don't like about the model. But in 30k it kind of works. Here he has sort of a gorget or gorget, however you pronounce that word, I always get it wrong. Um, just a little breathing mask that sticks up out of the throat of his armor. Nothing like what he's wearing. So for some reason he's got a Death Core of Krieg mask on now. It doesn't really affect the model, but it's reducing his face even more. So you're losing some of that character out of him. And what little face you've got, the colors in the face don't actually look right. They're too rich. Why is that? Well, you want to go for cool palettes when you're painting Nurgle. Nurgle is not about rich purples, rich reds. They make great accents, great contrast colors, I think. But a purple is a regal color. Yes, it is a cool color, relatively speaking, but it's a very regal color. It's what we think of when we think of Roman emperors. It's what we think of when we think of kings and queens around the world is rich velvety reds and purples. They do not suit Nurgle. The creams and khakis and whites, off-whites especially, and dirty whites, they're what we think of when we think of Nurgle. These whites along his armor, what little white he has as a cloak, is not dirty. It's not unclean. It doesn't suit with the character of the model. You may not realize it, but your brain does, and you're looking at this Mortarian saying something is not quite right. What's not quite right is he's clean. Yes, he's mutated. He has horns and bones and things sticking out of him, but he doesn't look diseased and filthy. Even his 30k model looks more battered and tarnished than the 40k one does. The 40k one, yeah, he has a little bit of pox on his kneecaps or, you know, whatever, but the 30k one, he has rust running down his legs from the joints. This Mortarian doesn't. The other Mortarian, he has the chainmail. Those Baroque features that really, you know, they harken back to Gothic armor, Middle Ages, that kind of thing. 
This Mortarian doesn't have that. Yes, he has chains. But again, the chains are leading up to the balls, and the balls, the plague sensors on the end, burn the incense or release the chemicals or whatever they do in the fluff currently. They're what you're looking at. Now, warm colours are a good thing. Warm colours are perfectly fine used in the correct sense. Here is a bloodthirster of corn. It uses warm colours. Warm is representing aggression, speed, menace, that kind of thing. But you want cool colours here. Look at this Glotkin. There's purples and greens. Green being the traditional colour of Nurgle's demons. So anything that's sort of demonic has these interesting colours of green. But you look at the more human people on it, they're in very cool colours. Very muted purples. Now that works on flesh, not cloaks. Why does it work on flesh? Because purple flesh with hints of greens and creams and car keys to it looks like diseased, rotting flesh. Like a corpse that's been sitting there for a while and started to turn black and blue as it rots away. And that's why it works. This Mortarian, he's quite different to Forge World's Mortarian because he's been painted in a lot more cool colours. Yes, he doesn't have the white cloak, but something still feels off about him. This Mortarian looks more like he's come from the depths of the sea. And to really emphasise the point, he's been put into um, a resin display base which is full of liquid and has dead corpses floating in it. So again, it's carrying over that theme. The colour of the armour, everything just suggests um, like a ghost or a corpse coming out of the water. And the very cool colours also uh, share those same colours as the dead body. There's the creams and purples, just like bruised dead limbs. This grotesque, despite being a dark Eldar product, has the same thing. It's something that's been malformed. It's not quite right. It's been damaged in some way. Its flesh is being moulded and changed, and it has the same thing. Light colours of skin with purple patches um, to represent the bruising and the sores. Again, the cool colours really ram this home. If you replaced that purples with strong oranges and reds, you would lose the impact of the model it would start to suggest something different. Instead of being a wounded creature that's in order pain, it will start to look like a more aggressive creature. Now keep this in mind when you look back at Mortarian. This Mortarian has rich purples in his cloak. He has rich reds in his loincloth. His whites are bright white, hinting, starting to head into blues as they head towards his base. But his color palette is very strong and bright. This is sort of the halfway point between the two. It's not bright enough to be aggressive, but it's nowhere near dull enough to suggest a corpse or death. Keep heading further. Here is a Death Guard Marine from 30k. This one emphasizes two points that I think need to be brought up. The first is again in the color palette. Very muted colors, screaming um, of a corpse. Those blues in this case instead of purples and the sort of browns and whites and khakis and off colors again it has that strong image in your brain that's saying this is more like a corpse because that's what they're trying to hint at with this artwork the base complements that the base is where the rich colors are used the oranges and that kind of thing the base is there to complement the model, not overshadow the model. And this is one of the reasons why I hate clear basing, because clear basing tells you nothing. This basing is like suggesting something about how this guy might bring death to an otherwise fertile world. There's some sort of subtle metaphor going on here, which happens with great basing. No, this is not the sort of basing you'll see always spread out throughout an army when someone's building a 40k army on the tabletop. But in the case of a display miniature like this one, or what Demon Primark Mortarian is, realistically, Games Workshop's one is the display miniature. The one they want to display to the world to get people to buy the model. This is where they should be using those interesting colours and doing something with it, something vibrant, something cool. But instead, that's not what they've done. So think about it. What works and what doesn't with this model? 
well, as I've sort of said throughout the episode, he carries over pretty much none of his 30k figurine, which is a good looking miniature. The whole reason that he's got an armor change, Sculptor felt like it, or Headquarters at Games Workshop felt like it. He should, realistically, and this is a nitpick, have Mortarion's 30k armor just slightly deformed to represent how it is the same armor, but Chaos has corrupted it. In this case, it doesn't look like Chaos has corrupted that armor, it's just he's wearing corrupted armor of some kind. Also, the face, the focal point of this model, you are not drawn to it. That's a bad thing. And I don't mind this model. I like it. I actually like it more than Demon Primarch Magnus, for those who may find that hard to believe. The scythe. The scythe is this tiny little haft and this massive head. The scythe head is actually probably bigger than all of Mortarion's torso, and almost as long as his entire body, in fact. When again, in contrast with his 30k model, the scythe, whilst big, is only about the size of his leg. I know I've got one in person. This Mortarion, it's just... They're grotesquely altered proportions on him that don't need to be altered, and it's not actually enhancing the feel of the model to do so. Now keep in mind, this is a poor image of him. You can only judge a model so far from an image. They'll always look better in person, right? But... Again, the colour palette, the third point, you've not been drawn to the sculpt because of the fact he's not wearing the right armour, you're not drawn to his face. The colour palette does not draw you to his face. If they'd used the appropriate colours, perhaps a white hood over his head, the bright white contrasting with the green armour around it might have pulled you towards his face. Instead, you find yourself drawn towards this bright red loincloth hanging down between his legs or perhaps the little white Death Guard Legion symbol on his kneecap. Those are the things that draw you in. Also, the centre of gravity on this model, despite flying, is very low, because the scythe is held out low, the arms point down, the sensors on the balls and chains all hang outwards down around him. So visually, you are drawn to the lower half of this model, not the upper half, and that's despite the fact he has these large wings. The wings themselves, they look like a moth, or a butterfly that's just emerged from its cocoon for the first time, or perhaps a dead moth. They're starting to decay and fall apart. This is in a bit of a contrast where the artwork of him always had these just dirty, rotten bird's wings. Like when you see a dead bird on the side of the road sort of falling apart with maggots eating at it. That's an interesting bit of iconography, especially because very few demon princes have feathered wings. Most of the demon princes have more like bat's wings these kind of leathery wings. Um, Magnus, of course, has the feathers because Zench. But Mortarion had these real dirty feathers. They were the exact opposite of Magnus's feathers, where Magnus is very regal and, has, again, has a strong colour palette, the bright, vibrant colours. Uh, Mortarion is dull, subdued, dirty feeling. This Mortarion doesn't have that. The wings look good, but they don't feel right when you put them next to other Nurgle models. And this is something I harped on about uh, a little while back in other videos, how he had moth's wings. This is moth Tarian, not Mortarian. So, yeah, that's why this model isn't quite looking right for people. Again, I don't hate the model. I actually kind of like it. I think that with the appropriate paint job, this will work. This will look good. But this is not the appropriate paint job for this model. The green armour works. But the purple and red is definitely not the correct colours to go with. Also, the wings could probably have done better with a brown. Almost like a chitinous brown. Um, like the back of a cockroach. That probably would have worked really well. Or maybe some kind of pearlescence to it. Um, what more could you do with this? I would suggest maybe cutting these plague sensors down on their chains. So that they don't hang all the way down low because you want to bring that model's center of gravity up a little bit. You want to try and bring some of that focus back onto his face. And of course, with the face, you need to contrast it. I think if you have a white hood and you have more blued or purpled skin underneath, it'll really ram home that uh, feeling of a corpse because that will draw you in that contrast of colors there as opposed to this sort of purple hood, which blends in with the blues around it and just sort of obscures the face. 
and the detail of it. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the Mortarian model. Please, I'm not telling you whether or not to like this model. I'm not saying I'm right. I could be completely wrong in how I believe colour palettes work and design decisions and how you should base a model and that kind of thing. But I think I'm on the right track here. Anyway, I'm Mac with the Outer Circle. Leave your thoughts and feedback below. Uh, whether you think I'm right or wrong, I'm cool with it. And I will do my best to talk to you all in the comments. See you all next time.